So let's move on and uh, from nitrobenzene this time your job is to prepare metabromophenol okay so how are you going to do it now this if you bring this OH group first this phenol is ortho para directing because this is electron rich group it is electron donating group now if this thing is killing you ortho para directing and meta directing the good idea would be to go and revise that directing effect type directing effect a video will pop up listen to that fine now if you insert OH group first this thing will not work out because this bromine will go to ortho and para position so before bringing OH group you have to insert BR group and if you go for insertion of bromine directly then that will be a good idea because this NO2 group is electron withdrawing group so this is meta directing so bromine is going to come at meta position so if we carry out bromination We'll have meta nitro benzene. And from here, you have to reach here. And I don't need to tell you what you have to do. First of all, reduce it to aniline, substituted aniline. For step number one. Step number two, convert it to diazonium salt. And step number three, add warm water to this diazonium, diazonium salt. And that N2 group will come out and OH group will come in and we'll have our OH group at this position. So this thing should have to be very fast you have you this thing should come out of you instantly that you have to get get oh from no2 you prepare nh2 from nh2 you know how to get oh through diazonium salt that's the importance of this diazonium salt it helps you to get various function groups very easily so this conversion was an easy one Suppose I start with para nitro aniline and I want 1, 2, 3 tribromo benzene like this. So uh, figure out a method how you are going to do it. Huh. Fine, so please uh, spend some time in thinking how this conversion will occur and try to get your solution on your own. Okay, now if you have to add bromine, this, this, if, you, if you go on uh, straight away with bromination, if you add Br2, Al, Br3 on this, Now there are two groups, one is electron donating, one is, one is electron withdrawing. And we learned when we study the directing effect, then we learned this that when you have two groups, then the group which is electron donating, that group will dominate. And the directing effect of the electron donating group is the final directing effect for the new incoming electrophile. The reason for this we saw it there, I don't feel the need of getting into the reason once again. Now this is NH2 group, this is electron donating, this NO2 group is electron withdrawing. So this NH2 group will dictate the position of a new incoming electrophile. This happens to be ortho para directing, its para position is blocked. So it will direct the new incoming electrophile to ortho position. And we can see these bromine on both sides of this bromine. So maybe this bromine uh, can be brought after we remove this NH2 and before that these two bromines can occupy their positions. So if you do this step, now 
this is what you are going to get fine now you have to think uh, uh, that how you, you are going to remove this NH2 group and uh, how are you going to remove this NH2 group such that you add a bromine here. So that's the challenge and uh, I don't know how you're going to do, it, do this. There could be various methods, there could be various ways that you selectively do it. Find out at least one method to reach to this compound starting from this and you can take as many steps as you can, there is no uh, dearth of any chemical. You can use as much of them as you can because you're using it on paper. So uh, think of a method of reaching to this one, two, three tribromobenzene for starting from this particular reagent. One of the method possible can be this. Now, look, the idea is somehow you have, you are going to use diazonium salt because, uh, that's one of the, that is one of the powerful tool that we have in our hand. And I can see, and you can see that this nitro group goes. So somehow, if we can reduce this nitro group to an ester group, then how to remove that an ester group, we know. We'll make a diazonium salt out of it and we'll add a hypophosphorus acid and that's going to reduce it. To ben that's going to add hydrogen and remove N N2 and that's what have happened here. We can do that. The problem is if we reduce it then both the positions are amines. And when the both the positions are amines then uh, when you carry out diazotization then diazonium salt will come at both the positions. Fine. And when you are reducing it then both the position will be reduced and this position will also occupy hydrogen and this position will be also occupy hydrogen. So latter inserting a bromine at this position will be troublesome because of hindrance. So uh, what can be done is you, you somehow safeguard this. You reduce this, bring a hydrogen here and then you unsafeguard it. When you unsafeguard it and then carry out diazotization and then you react with CuBr so that bromine will come at this position. But how you are going to safeguard it? One way of safeguarding it is making it react with acyl chloride. When you make it react with acyl chloride, this is what you are going to have. Fine. Now you carry out diazotization. Step number one, reduce it to amine. Step number two, make it react with NaNO2 HCl at low temperature. That will prepare diazonium salt. Step number three, make it react with hypophosphorus acid, H3PO2. Fine. Now these three steps are going to yield a hydrogen at this position. When you have completed this, then hydrolyze it. When you hydrolyze it, this amide will get hydrolyzed and this part is going to go away as acid and you are going to regenerate this amine. So now, you have this. Fine. And from here, again, if you prepare diazonium salt of it, once you prepare diazonium salt and then you make it react with CuBr, then you will get the desired product. Okay.